It's the most wonderful time of the year. Of course, for many people, it's the most depressing time of the year, and maybe this year especially so. Well, Christmas can uh, bring some mixed emotions and uh, can bring some messy emotions. And so today we're going to be looking at the messy emotions of Christmas. So thank you for joining us and welcome to Calvary Baptist to our online worship expression. And if you're a visitor with us, we give you a special welcome. So let us, uh, oh come, let us adore him. Let us worship. Good morning, everyone. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday in Advent. We have lit the candle of joy. Let's begin our worship with select scripture verses concerning joy. Psalm 16, verse 11. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Psalm 94, verse 19. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. 1 Peter 1, verses 8 and 9. Though you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Romans 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray together. Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father, as we join in worship this morning, we acknowledge how much joy a newborn baby brings into the life of a family, and we bless you for the birth announcement given by the angel to the shepherds, the announcement of good news of great joy for all people because a savior had been born. Throughout our lives, we have looked forward to celebrations of special events, but in reflection, these were but momentary flashes of happiness. However, these days of challenge in our continuing struggle to cope with the COVID-19 epidemic have greatly reduced those celebrations. Many have not been able to be with loved ones when they passed away. Others have lost employment, which has caused so much upheaval with families, our schools, and the corporate world. These happenings have forced us to rethink our values of how we spend our time, but have also generated a lot of creativity that has brought some light to a dark situation. Heavenly Father, even as we celebrate the discovery of a vaccine already being administered and bringing a ton of hope to a weary world, we thank you we can experience more than hope. We can possess joy as a result of Jesus' birth. The scriptures we read tell us this joy is not a joy that will disappear with dire circumstances, but it's a deep-seated joy that can only come from you. This genuine joy can be possessed by anyone who will recognize Jesus as their Savior. When we confess our sins, we receive forgiveness through faith in the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus. May your gift of this joy be the stabilizer to carry us through the unpredictable days of the new year of 2021. We ask this in the name of the one born in Bethlehem, Jesus Christ, who gave his disciples a pattern for prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen and Amen. Good morning. This morning's reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, and includes verses 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, having have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their own country by another route. May God add his blessing to this reading from his word. Well, Christmas can be such wonderful joy, a time of joy and, and happiness. We think of the joy and happiness of being with friends and family, though maybe not so much this year. Uh, but the wonderful joy and happiness, usually of being with friends and family, the wonderful joy and happiness uh, for, just think of kids as children as they anticipate uh, Christmas morning, it's always exciting. Uh, those of us that are food lovers love this time of year with the um, uh, all kinds of wonderful food, including my mom's shortbread, now my wife's shortbread, and, um, and chocolate, of course, too. But anyway, let's not go there. But food, uh, we can think of that, brings lots of joy. And... Um, so many other things, just the Christmas music. Uh, there's just so much that's joyful at this time of year. Of course, for many people, there's a lot that can be stressful at this time of year and uh, not joyful. And in fact, for many people, go through depression this time of year, especially, especially this time of year. And it's a proven fact that more people are depressed this time of year than any other. And for many people, it's... It's because of family, it's because of family relationships, it's because of the stress and the anxiety that brings into their lives and the worry. Uh, for many people, it's, it's because of grief and uh, the, the pangs of old griefs that come back or, or new losses that are really brought, brought into the, the foreground and into the limelight of their lives. And so grief can really be touching people at this time of year too. And of course, there's, there's also this vision of the perfect Christmas that nobody ever attains and yet they try so hard, and yet you don't reach it. And so some people really feel sorrow over not reaching that perfect Christmas. So it's a real mixed bag of emotions this time of year. And for many people, it's actually, it is the whole mix of emotions. It's not just that it's all joyful. It's not just that it's all depressing. It's that day to day, it's different. And hour to hour, there can be different emotions. A real mixed emotions, a real messy emotions. And we've been speaking about this sermon series being called uh, the most messed up Christmas ever. And that's not actually referring to this Christmas. The most messed up Christmas ever was actually that first Christmas. And there, when we look back to the Christmas story, that very first Christmas, we're going to see that there are mixed emotions back then. Emotions are messy back then too. So we're going to take a look at those messed up emotions back then and let them speak in to our lives today. So what are those mixed up emotions back then? 
Well, we see it when the Magi, they're approaching, they're getting close to, to where Jesus is, and they see that the star stops, and they are overwhelmed with joy. So there's the joy of drawing close to this new king. That is contrasted, that joy in Matthew chapter 2 is contrasted with incredible sorrow later in chapter 2, when we have the story of the infants massacred, the infants killed in Bethlehem. And uh, Bible scholars think there was 10 to 30 infants killed maybe, but there's an incredible sorrow in the Matthew 2 story there about over this. And of course, another emotion at play there is fear that the wise men, they're overjoyed at one moment. There's the star stopped. Here is Jesus. Here's this new king. But the next moment they're warned not to go back to the old King Herod because that's not going to go well. So there's fear around that. Of course, there's the fear of that Mary and Joseph would have when they take, um, when they take Jesus and they flee to Egypt. And when they come back because Herod has died, there's still fear because Herod's son is now in charge and he's no better than his dad. So there's fear. So here we have this real mixed, uh, real mixed bag of emotions in Matthew chapter two in, this, in the Christmas, this first Christmas between incredible joy and incredible sorrow and incredible fear. And really this, this mix of emotions speaks to us about two things primarily. It speaks to us first off about life, but it also speaks to us about death. So let's take a look at these mixed emotions and, and, and think of them first with regards to life. And, um, and this is what the Magi would have had in mind uh, as they're approaching Jesus. They, they don't really have in mind, you know, we, 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 we love that, that song, Mary, did you know? Mary, did you really know what Jesus, who this Jesus really is and what he would do? Did she really know? Well, certainly the Magi didn't know. But they knew enough to know that this was to be a good king. And they're probably thinking purely in earthly terms here of this is to be a great king of Israel. And that's great because they could use, the Israelites could use a break. Um, uh, they've, had a, well, they've had King Herod the Great and he wasn't so great. They could use a good king. And so there's this joy over this king that is expected to bring this great, great political rule to be really. That's what the Magi have in mind, but they're overjoyed at that because that stands in great contrast to the kind of King Herod was. This is Herod the Great. And uh, we know through not just studying the Bible, but other sources of history that Herod the Great was actually dependent on your perspective. He was actually Herod the Horrible. Uh, he was great if you, if you loved buildings. Yeah, he, he was the one who rebuilt the temple in Jerusalem. Yeah, good for him. Uh, and built many great buildings and whatnot. Yeah, and and Judea actually flourished economically under his rule and such things. Yeah, good. So he was great if you loved buildings and, and politics, but uh, he was not good if you liked people. He was ruthless. He had one of his wives executed. He had several of his sons executed. He, of course, had all those infants of Bethlehem executed. He was a terrible king in that regard. In fact, his, he was such a bad king in that when he, when he got close to his own death, he had created orders that some of the noble people of Jerusalem would be, would be rounded up and they would be put to death so that when Herod died, there would be mourning in the land and not rejoicing. Because he knew that people would breathe a sigh of relief when he died, that his reign over them was bringing sorrow and fear that his death would actually bring rejoicing and, and hopefulness and, and a sigh of relief. Thankfully, those orders were not carried out. But indeed, the, his, his kingdom was split between three of his sons and uh, the, the son that was ruling in Jerusalem, was he was a terrible ruler too. So bad, in fact, that the Romans eventually came out, came, came through and gave him the boot. And that's why when, when we have in the Christmas story, we have King Herod in charge and in, in ruling over Jerusalem and Judea and Judah. But when you get to the Easter story, by that time, um, by that time, it's actually Pilate is in charge as the prefect. So there's an incredible change there in the politics of the land because the ruler of Her the rule of Herod and his son were just such terrible things. And so the Magi, they're looking at this and they're saying, 
here is a good king born to the Israelites. And of course, those who knew the Old Testament prophecies would have that sense. In fact, even in, in that passage of Matthew chapter 2, we re refers back to the Old Testament and it says, and you Bethlehem in the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. And so here's the sense of this king who will be a shepherd uh, to the people of Israel. And we look to Isaiah chapter 9, we often read at Christmas time. And let me read part of it to you. For a child has been born for us. Uh, how Christmassy. A son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He shall establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And we read that and we rightfully so automatically think of the divinity of Jesus and we recognize Jesus as Lord, as King of Kings, Lord of Lords. But what we sometimes miss in doing that is the recognition here that Jesus actually is a ruler who, who rules well. It's not just that he's God, it's that he is a good ruler. This King that is to be born is to be a wonderful ruler, a, a ruler that rules with justice and not like the rest of the kings we've had. Uh, to be honest. And, and actually, Isaiah, you follow through in chapter 10, and you'll see at the beginning there, ah, you who make iniquitous decrees, here it's talking to awful rulers, who write oppressive statues to turn aside the needy from justice and to rob the poor of my people of their right, that widows may be your spoil and that you may make the orphans your prey. And there it's speaking to this terrible rule of, of rulers, of kings, of oppressors, of society who who really make, make life miserable for the people, uh, who, of course, like Herod, bring fear, who are the cause of sorrow in people's lives. Contrast to that, Jesus is the shepherd, the good shepherd who even lays down his life for the sheep, the shepherd who puts the sheep first, who lives for the sheep, who rules for the sheep. Uh, Jesus is that good shepherd, the good ruler. And so this speaks to us about our lives in the here and now. What are our rulers like? Are they like Herod and their influence on the world brings sorrow? It brings fear, it brings anxiety. Or are the rulers of the world like Jesus, bringing justice, good things happening for those people that need it the most? And also it speaks to us about we ourselves and the influence that we have on others. And we all have influence on others. We may not think of ourselves as leaders, but we all influence others in ways we don't even recognize. What kind of influence do we have on others? Do we bring, do we bring upon them sorrow? Do we bring upon them fear and anxiety and stress like Herod? Or do we bring joy? Like Jesus, how, what can we do to, and with the Holy Spirit's help, to become more like Christ in our influence on others, to have good leadership in the lives of others and not be like Herod? So that's, that's one thing, the mixed emotions. As we think of the mixed emotions of, of the Christmas, that first Christmas, uh, we can be caused to think of leadership in the world today, including our own. What, it, what is it like? What does it bring to people's lives? But here's the second part. It doesn't just speak about life. It also speaks about death. And keep in mind here that, that the Christmas story, it really brings, uh, we often skip over it, right? We just get to the part about Jesus being born. We talk about the shepherds. We talk about the magi and we stop there. But the Christmas story keeps going. And, and it goes, goes to that part that we often miss out about the infants being massacred in Bethlehem because Herod wants to get rid of Jesus. And so he doesn't know how to find him, so he figures just killing all the infants will do it. And so here, <clears throat> Matthew says, as he's writing about this, he really picks up on the emotion of, of the people of Bethlehem and quotes the Old Testament to really capture their emotion. And so I'm going to read that from Matthew 2, which is a 
a quotation from the Old Testament itself. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they are no more. Refusing to be consoled, just this real sense of sorrow. And so here's part of the mixed emotions of that first Christmas, that messy emotions of the Christmas, of the Christmas story. That there's this incredible sorrow and this incredible fear in Bethlehem at this time was probably a town of about a thousand people. And you can imagine how it would have impacted the entire community. Just the fear that would have gripped everyone, the sorrow that the entire community would have felt, uh, you know, uh, for, for those who had lost their loved ones just so, so horrendously. Death really does bring strong emotions. And as we think of death, how it touches people even today, it brings strong emotions, so much so that some people don't ever want to talk about it or hear people like me talk about it. They just don't want it to be a topic of discussion because it just brings such difficult and heavy emotions to the forefront of their hearts and minds. And it is a difficult topic, but indeed we must talk about it. There's incredible sorrow with that loss that we experience through death. There can also be incredible anger and frustration when we think it's an unfair death. But really when we're speaking about death here, death is actually a symptom of a bigger problem. And that problem is the sin that separates us from God. Sin separates us from God and the ultimate conclusion, the ultimate road that leads us down is to one from complete separation of God, death. But here's the good news. This baby Jesus wasn't just to be a good king, better than Herod, but he was also to be the king that would deal with our greatest problems. He would be the king that would not just deal with the, the, the difficult troubles that the most needy are going through, but he would deal with the the greatest need that we all have, that we all stand before a holy God with, in our sinfulness, separated from him. So we have this incredible need for reconciliation with God. And it's this infant Jesus, Mary, did you know? I doubt she really knew it. The Magi certainly wouldn't have known it. Really, nobody really knew at that time just what Jesus would do to reconcile sinful humanity to a holy God. Jesus is that good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. And that can be us when we accept that gift, when we trust Jesus, when we come to him uh, just in full dependence upon his goodness towards us, his grace. And so here we have these mixed emotions in the Christmas story of this incredible weeping and sorrow because of the, the death that we hear about but also there's the incredible joy of the Magi, and yet they didn't realize just how much joy there really ought to be because of what Jesus would do about death and about this problem. Now remember, death is just a symptom of a bigger problem, that sin which separates us from God. Jesus has dealt with that at the cross. And so through Jesus, we have this incredible joy when we think about death that it no longer becomes this thing of it's the end and that's it, but it becomes, boy, it's the turning of the page to start a new chapter. And we don't fully what it, know what it looks like, but it certainly involves the resurrection of the dead to eternal life with God. And we don't fully know what all that looks like, but it's, uh, we, lo we look forward to it with joy, knowing that God is good and God is gracious. It will be good. And there are hints in the Bible, strong hints of what it's gonna be like. And so we, we look forward to it with incredible joy. And so Jesus, this infant Jesus, actually brings incredible joy into the discussion about death. And so when we think about our own deaths, do we only, does that only cause us with, cause fear and anxiety and stress and worry and sorrow? Or is there an element of joy there also? There can be that element of joy. You know, there's a, a song I love to hear every, uh, every Christmas time. It's by Stephen Curtis Chapman, and uh, it's a song called Home for the Holidays. 
or I'll be home for Christmas, sorry. No, uh, something like that. Anyway, I'll include, um, I'll include it in the playlist of, of songs and carols that go along with today's service. And just a reminder uh, to, to watch for that. So I'll include the song and I won't tell you too much about the song. I'll let you listen to it and hear the story that it tells. But the thing I love about this song is it captures both the sadness that is a real thing because of death, because of loss, but it also captures the joy that is a real thing because of the grace of God, because of the goodness of God. I'm not going to say anything more about that song. You enjoy it and listen to it. But what about our mixed emotions at Christmas time? That first Christmas, there were mixed emotions. There was incredible joy as the Magi saw the star. Here's a good ruler. Here's a good ruler who would do so much more than even what the Magi expected. But there was also sorrow. What about the mixed emotions in our lives this Christmas? What about the emotions we draw out of other people? Are we like Herod? Or is there something about us that is Christ-like? But also, what about the emotions when we think of death? Is it nothing but fear and anxiety and worry and sorrow? Or actually, is there an incredible joy associated with thinking about death and what death leads to? Today, we lit the candle of joy because this baby Jesus was born and that changes everything, even what death means for us. Christmas might be messed up this year, but may you have a merry if messy Christmas. There can be a lot of sorrow this year, a lot of fear this year, but there can also be a lot of joy. May you have a Merry Christmas. Hello, Bob Newton here, wishing all my fellow Calvary Baptist members a very merry and very safe Christmas and a new year full of God's blessings. Hi, this is Maureen Ledgerwood, Shannon, and Hillary, and we'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas from the Ledgerwood household, also from Ghost and Holly. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. On behalf of Rita Zirin and I, we wish you a Merry Christmas, stay safe, and stay healthy. Hello there, it's Bev and Lillian Harmden. Just wanting to say hello to our church family and thank you for all your kindness through the year. We've all had a tough year this time, but hopefully most of us have come through unscathed. We want to wish you a very happy Christmas safe Christmas, and hopefully a bright new year for everyone. Thank you, and God bless you. Good afternoon, Calvary Baptist Church, and let's hope we're having a better 2021 than we have 2020. Anyways, and remember, life is not measured by the number of breaths we take, but the moments that take our breaths away, like when our king sings, Mary, did you know? Every Christmas, that always takes my breath away. Anyways, this is Merry Xmas 
from the Linton family. And this is Judy Linton. Hi, I'm Richard. I'm Catherine. I'm Josh. This is Rocky. This is Clyde. We're um, the Halls. From all from us to our home to yours, we'd like to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a safe and happy holidays. Hi, we're Hilary and Ron Platt, and we just want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And maybe it's a safe New Year too, one that we can more, feel more comfortable in going out and visiting with people again. But until that happens, take care. You know, honey, I've been sitting here racking my brain to try to figure out a way that we could send a lovely, warm Christmas greeting to our Calvary Baptist Church family. We can, you know. We can? Yes. How? We can send it electronically. We can? How do you do that? Well, look, here they are. Oh, yeah. Hi, everybody. Didn't see you there. Yeah, well, we're the Kings. I'm Art. And I'm Pam. And we just love to send you Christmas blessings and warmest greetings from our house to yours, to you and yours, for healthy, happy, safe 2021. You know, COVID's kind of a negative thing, but why don't we try to think of it in a positive way? How, you say? Well, what about an acrostic, something like this? Christ, our victorious Emmanuel Deliverer. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. We are praying that the blessings of Christmas will bring joy and peace to you that will remain with you throughout 2021. We send you our love. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Bye. From our family to you and yours. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Can you say it again? Say Merry, Merry Christmas. Christ. There you go. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Good job. We thank those who brought uh, Christmas greetings this uh, Sunday. And uh, there's one more Sunday that you can do that if you'd like to do so. Uh, please be, speak to either Jackie Brimblecombe or myself. And uh, we'd really need to, to know by Wednesday uh, if that's possible. Uh, so thank you to those who sent greetings. Thank you to Wynne and Robert who took part in worship today. And thank you to you for joining with us in worship today. And just a wee reminder to watch for the, the hymns and carols that go along with today's worship. Also be watching for the Christmas Eve service. And when you, when you see that, uh, please think to share that with family and friends. Uh, that would be a good, a wonderful thing to do. And speaking of Christmas Eve, uh, the Christmas Eve service here at Calvary could uh, also be called a festival of hugs. That even those people who are not huggy will give you a hug on Christmas Eve. And uh, unfortunately that's not happening this year, so be sure to, uh, to give somebody a hug through a phone call or through a text message or an email or a connection somehow. And so let's keep connecting with one another. And uh, we thank God for the connection we have with him through this baby Jesus whose birth we celebrate at this time. And uh, so let's have our benediction from the book of Hebrews for a change. And it says this, Now may the God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good, so that you may do his will, working among us, which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And all God's people said, Amen.